students have a lot on their plates and for them to take this on and do this, we're just really impressed and I shared with them no matter what happens, we're all honored really to be watching their performances. So, um, I would also like to recognize a board member who's here tonight and um, she, I overheard her say this, so I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. She said, I used to come out of obligation for being a board member. Now I come just because I love it so much. And so Ann Campbell, would you stand up please? And thank you for being here. She, she drives from Stevens and Carson to come in. So also want to say thank you and introduce our superintendent, Tim Merlino is here tonight. And is very supportive of this event and um, we're just really thankful for that. So finally, I want to give a shout out to the teachers who are here tonight. I know there are several of you here watching your students and cheering them on. So would teachers please stand who are here tonight? Thank you so much for being here. I know that it helps for them to see friendly faces out there. So. So of course we could not um, have the competition tonight without our judges. And so I'd like to take a moment to introduce them and I just wanna say thank you. These judges volunteer their time to be here and it, we really, really appreciate it. So please know that. Would you just stand while I talk about you, please? Um, I will start with Michelle Larson, Michelle. Um, she is a communications manager for ASD 112 and she serves the Kelso School District up in Kellett's County. And um, she has a long time love affair with the beauty and power of words. Uh, she chaired the poetry anthology as a senior at Colorado Mesa University and where she earned a degree in English literature. Really cool thing about Michelle, she founded the Positive Thought nonprofit, The Joy Team in 2010 and has been spreading joy ever since. And if you've seen those big, giant yellow billboards anywhere around the nation, the country, um, that's Michelle's nonprofit. So um, we are very thankful to have you here tonight. Thanks, Michelle. For being here. So Caroline, would you mind standing? She is a first time judge, right? And we're so pleased to have her. She is a board certified hospital chaplain at Legacy Salmon Creek and an ordained minister in the United Church of Christ. She also has a background as an editor and published translator specializing in German to English translation. Wow. Um, her interests include classical music and traditional dance, as well as exploring places of natural and historic interest. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Adele White, would you stand up for us, please? So Adele is a retired K-12 arts educator whose career spans 50 years. Wow. Um, she was on the planning team and a founding faculty member of Jefferson Performing Arts and Buckman Elementary Arts in Portland and also Vancouver School of Arts and Academics, so VSAA. Um, we're just so pleased to have you here tonight. Thank you so much, Adele. <laughs> and finally, Effie Trial. Effie is the literacy coordinator here at ESD 112 and she's been in this role for five years. She previously worked for Vancouver Public Schools as a classroom teacher, instructional coach, and English language learner coach. She's our accuracy judge tonight, and so the students have already met her if they happen to need um, a prompt. Effie's friendly face will be there um, giving them a prompt. Um, so thank you so much, Effie, for doing this for us tonight. One more person, she's standing in the back of the room, uh, Jody Thomas. Of course, this um, <coughs> event would not be possible without some coordination, and Jody, on top of all of her other duties here at ESD 112, is our Poetry Out Loud coordinator. And so I want to just recognize her and give her a call. <laughs> Jody will also be joining Susan Rawl in the boardroom, um, and they will be huddled over a computer computing the scores of the uh, judges, and that is, I've done that before, and I never want to volunteer to do that one that <laughs> again. Um, and so I'm really thankful that they're gonna be doing that, so. 
So I just, before we get started, wanted to remind you um, or let you know what the students are being um, judged on tonight. They are being judged on physical presence, voice and articulation, dramatic appropriateness, evidence of understanding, overall performance, and accuracy of recitation. So that's a lot of things that they're, they're being judged on. And sometimes when we see the final scores, you know, it, we, we reflect on all of those things and um, that's what they're being scored on. So each student's going to recite two, two poems tonight and here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna have two rounds um, and we're gonna do a short break in between. And then we'll conclude with the announcement of two students who will go forward and be advancing to our state competition. So the first round, we're gonna go in alphabetical order, um, how they're seated. And then we're gonna take a short break. And the second round will be in reverse alphabetical order. So, um, and certainly at the break, there's really good cookies in the back. <laughs> and so please help yourself. Um, and so with that, I think we will go ahead and get started with our first participant, uh, Benedict Alexander from Hayes Freedom High School. Famous by Naomi Shihab Nye. The river is famous to the fish. The loud voice is famous to silence, which knew that it would inherit the earth before anybody said so. The cat sleeping on the fence is famous to the birds watching him from the birdhouse. The tear is famous briefly to the cheek. The idea that you carry close to your bosom is famous to your bosom. The boot is famous to the earth, more famous than the dress shoe, which is famous only to floors. The bent photograph is famous to the one who carries it, and not at all famous to the one who is pictured. I want to be famous to shuffling men who smile while crossing streets, sticky children in grocery lines, famous as the one who smiled back. I want to be famous in the way a pulley is famous, or a buttonhole, not because it did anything spectacular, but because it never forgot what it could do. Thank you. Okay, and next from Cedar Tree Classical Christian School, we have Isaac Liu. <clears throat> In Felix by Ada Isaacs Menken. Where is the promise of my years? Once written on my brow, ere errors, agonies, and fears brought with them all that speaks in tears, ere I had sunk beneath my peers, where sleeps that promise now? Not lingers to redeem those hours. Still, still to memory sweet. The flowers that bloomed in sunny bowers are withered all, and evil towers supreme above her sister powers of sorrow and deceit. I Look along the columned years and see life's riven fame just where it fell amid the jeers of scornful lips whose mocking sneers forever hiss within mine ears to break the sleep of pain. I can but own my life is vain, a desert 
void of peace. I missed the goal I sought to gain. I missed the measure of the strain that lulls fame's fever in the brain and bids earth's tumult cease. Myself. Alas for a theme so poor. A theme but rich in fear. I stand a wreck on error's shore. A specter knocked within the door. A houseless shadow evermore. An exile lingering here. Thank you. Um, and next we have Grace Melber from Ridgeville High School. Spanglish by Tato Laviera. Pues estoy creando Spanglish, bicultural system, scientific, lexicographical, intertextual integrations. Two expressions, existentially wired. Two dominant languages, continentally abrazándose, in colloquial combate in the aceras del soil. Imperio Spanglish emerges, control pandiaje, sobre territorio bilingual. Los novedades mexicanas mixing with radio, rock and roll, condimented cocina lore. Immigrant, migrant, nasal mispronouncements, baraja, chismeteo, social club, hip hop, prieto, street salsa, corner soul and mix dorando, Spanish pop, farandula. Standard English classroom with computer technicalities. Spanglish is literally perfect. Spanglish is ethnically snobbish. Spanglish is Garoli Interagencia. Which U.S. slang do you speak? Thank you. Okay, and our next performer is Orman Nelson from Heritage High School. This is Author's Prayer by Ilya Kaminsky. If I speak for the dead, I must leave this animal in my body. I must write the same poem over and over, for an empty page is their white flag of surrender. If I speak for them, I must live on the edge of myself. I must live as a blind man who runs to rooms without touching the furniture. Yes, I live. Uncross the streets will ask me, what year is it? I can dance and sleep in my laugh. In front of the mirror, even sleep is a prayer. Lord. I will praise your madness in language not mine, speech. Of music that waits us, music in which we move. For whatever I say is a kind of petition. In the darkest days, I must praise. Thank you. Okay, and our final performer for this round is Eliana Stem, <coughs> and she's from Vancouver School of Arts and Academics. Monet Refuses the Operation by Liesl Mueller. Doctor, you say there are no halos around the streetlights in Paris, and what I see is an aberration caused by old age, an affliction. I tell you, it has taken me all my life to arrive at the vision of gas lamps as angels. 
to soften and blur and finally banish the edges you regret I don't see. To learn that the line I called the horizon does not exist, and sky and water, so long apart, are the same state of being. Fifty-four years before I could see Ruin Cathedral is built of parallel shafts of sun, and now you want to restore my youthful errors. Fixed notions of top and bottom, the illusion of three-dimensional space, wisteria separate from the bridge it covers. What can I say to convince you the Houses of Parliament dissolve night after night to become the fluid dream of the Thames? I will not return to a universe of objects that don't know each other, as if islands were not the lost children of one great continent. The world is flux, and light becomes what it touches, becomes water, lilies on water, above and below water, becomes lilac and mauve and yellow and white and cerulean lamps, small fists passing sunlight so quickly to one another that it would take long streaming hair inside my brush to catch it, to paint the speed of light. Our weighted shapes, these verticals, burn to mix with air and change our bones, skin, clothes to gases. Doctor, if only you could see how heaven pulls earth into its arms and how infinitely the heart expands to claim this world, blue vapor without end. Thank you. And that concludes our first round. And I just want to know how many of you feel like our judges have a really hard job. <laughs> so thank you. And can we just give a big round of applause for you guys? Thank you. So we're going to come back together in 10 minutes for the second round. Um, please help yourself to refreshments and take a stretch break. And we'll see you in 10 minutes. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start round two. Before we start, I would like to, I introduce um, our superintendent and one of our board members, and we have another board member here joining us, Darlene Stickle. Um, wave your hand. <laughs> Thank you for being here. also on our ESD board. We appreciate you being here. Okay, um, as I mentioned, now we're going to go backwards. Um, and so we just heard before we broke from Eliana Stem. We're going to hear from her first this time. She's from BSAA. Kindness by Yusef Komunyaka. For Carol Rigolo. When deeds splay before us, precious as gold and unused chances stripped from the wine bone, we know the moment kind-heartedness walks in. Each praise be echoes us back as the years uncount themselves, eating salt. Though blood first shaped us on the climbing wheel, the human mind Lit by the savannah's ice star and thistle rose, your knowing gaze enters a room and opens the day, saying, we were made for fun. Even the bedazzled brute knows when sunlight falls through leaves across honed knives on the table. If we can see it, push shadows aside, growing closer, are we less broken? a barometer, temperature gauge, a ruler in minus fractions and pedigrees, a thingamajig, a probe with an all-seeing eye. What do we need to measure kindness? Every unheld breath, every unkind leap year? Sometimes a sober voice is enough to calm the waters and to drive away the false witnesses saying, look, here are the broken treaties beauty brought to us earthbound sentinels. 
Thank you. And our next performer is Orman Nelson from Heritage High School. This is Be Music Tonight by Kenneth Patchen. Be Music Night, that her sleep may go, where angels have their pale, tall choirs. Be a hand, see, that her dreams may watch, thy guidesmen touching the green flesh of the world. Be a voice, sky, that her beauties may be counted, and the stars will tilt their head, their quiet faces into the mirror of her loveliness. Be a road, earth, that her walking may take thee, where the towns of heaven lift their breathing spires. Oh, be a world and a thorn, God, that her living may find its weather, and the souls of ancient bells in a child's book shall lead her into thy wondrous house. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And our next performer is Jasmine Mendoza from Stevenson High School. Grief by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. I tell you, hopeless grief is passionless, that only men incredulous of despair, half taught in anguish through the midnight air, beat upward to God's throne in loud access of shrieking and reproach. Full desertness in souls as countries lie silent bear under the blanching vertical eye glare of the absolute heavens. Deep-hearted man, express grief for thy dead in silence, like to death. Most like a monumental statue set in everlasting watch and moveless woe, till itself crumble to the dust beneath. Touch it. The marble eyelids are not wet. If it could weep, it could arise and go. Thank you. Okay, and next we have Grace Melber from Bridgeville High School. I Sit and Sew by Alice Moore Dunbar Nelson. I sit and sew a useless task, it seems. My hands grown tired, my head weighed down with dreams, the panoply of war, the martial tread of men, grim faced, stern eyed, gazing beyond the ken of lesser souls whose eyes have not seen death nor learned to hold their lives but as a breath. But I must sit and sew. I sit and sew, my heart aches with desire that pageant terrible, that fiercely pouring fire on wasted fields and wreathing grotesque things once men. My soul in pity flings appealing cries yearning only to go there in that holocaust of hell, those fields of woe. But I must sit and sew the little useless seam, the idle patch. Why dream I here beneath my homely thatch when there they lie in sudden mud and rain, pitifully calling me, the quick ones and the slain, you need me, Christ. It is no roseate dream that beckons me, this pretty, futile seam, it stifles me. God. Must I sit and sew? Thank you. Okay, and 
Thank you. Okay, and next up we have Isaac Liu from Cedar Tree Christian School. The Gift by Lee Young Lee. To pull the metal splinter from my palm, my father recited a story in a low voice. I, before the story ended, he'd remove the iron sliver I thought I'd die from. I can't remember the tale, but hear his voice still. A well of dark water. A prayer. And I recall his hands. Two measures of tenderness he laid against my face. The flames of discipline he raised above my head. Had you entered that afternoon, you would have thought you saw a man planting something in a boy's palm. A silver tear a tiny flame. Had you followed that boy, you would have arrived here, where I bend over my wife's right hand. Look how I shave her thumbnail down so carefully she feels no pain. Watch as I lift the splinter out. I was seven when my father took my hand like this. And I did not hold that shard between my fingers and think, Metal that will bury me, christen it little assassin, or going deep for my heart. And I did not lift up my wound and cry, death visited here. I did what a child does when he's given something to keep. I kissed my father. Thank you. Okay, and next from Camas High School, we have Bailey Grubbs. The Cross of Snow by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. In the long, sleepless watches of the night, a gentle face, the face of one long dead, looks at me from the wall, where round its head the night lamp casts a halo of pale light. Here, in this room, she died and soul more white. Never through martyrdom of fire was led to its repose, nor can in books be read the legend of a life more benedite. There is a mountain in the distant west, that sun defying in its deep ravines, displays a cross of snow upon its side. Such is the cross I wear upon my breast, these 18 years, through all the changing scenes and seasons, 
changeless since the day she died. Thank you. Okay, and next we have Mila Fuentes from Trout Lake School. Dawn of Man by Max Ritvell. After the cocoon, I was in a human body instead of a butterfly's. All along my back there was great pain. I groped to my feet where I felt wings behind me, trying to tilt me back. They succeeded in doing so after a day of exertion. I called that time overwhelmed with the ghosts of my wings, sleep. My thoughts remained those of a caterpillar. I took pleasure in climbing trees. I snuck food into all my pains. My mouth produced language, which I attempted to spin over myself and rip through, happier and healthier. I'd do this every few minutes. I'd think to myself, what made me such a failure? It's all a little touchingly pathetic to live like this. A grown creature telling ghost stories, staring at pictures paralyzed for hours. And even over dinner or in bed, still hearing the stories, seeing the pictures, an undertow sucking me back into myself. I'm told to set myself goals. But my mind doesn't work that way. I instead have wishes for myself. Wishes aren't afraid to take on their own color and life. I'm like a boy who takes a razor from a high cabinet, puffs out his cheeks, and strips them bloody. OK, and next we have Amy Eels from Battleground High School. The New Colossus by Emma Lazarus. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land, here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning. And her name? mother of exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep, ancient lands, your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Okay, and we are right back where we started. Our last performance of the night is Benedict Ale Alexander from Hayes Green High School. After the War by Rachel Galvin for Thomas Flum. When he got to the farmhouse, he rifled through the cabinets, drawers, and cupboards, and his buddies did too. The place was abandoned, or so he thought and his buddies did too. He tried to talk to people in the town, and his buddies did too, but he, he was the only one whose Yiddish made it across into German. They took his meaning. He and the farmhouse took a camera and a gun. His buddies, who knows? About the gun, it's also hard to say. But after the war, he took up photography. Why not? And shot beautiful women for years. Got pretty good at it, and how? won prizes and engraved plates, put them in a drawer, forgot the war, forgot his buddies, forgot the women, forgot the drawer. Thank you.
concludes round two and our final performances of the evening, I just want to take a minute and you know what they're thinking. These students are so incredible. They they stand up here and have to recite every single word with accuracy plus perform for us. And so I just really um, admire and respect what you've done tonight and uh, want to give you one more question. Okay, so we're going to take a short break again, and here's why. So you, so you can have another cookie, of course. But, um, our, um, we have two of our uh, score tally uh, folks in the back room, uh, triple checking scores, and we want to make sure that we're very accurate, so we want to give them five to ten minutes to do that. I'll keep checking in with them, so if we could just take another short break. We'll come back and um, announce the two top uh, finals. So, we have a little something, you probably saw us rushing around a little bit up here. Um, we actually have a three-way tie. And when that happens, um, we have the three who are tied actually recite um, one of their poems again, a poem of your choice, and um, just recite it and you'll be judged on it again. That's that's how we do that. So, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> um, so, we're just going to go in alphabetical order of the three. Um, and so, Isaac Liu from Cedar Tree, uh, Classical Christian, come and uh, choose one of your poems. And if you would tell the accuracy judge which poem. You defined it as all Yeah. Isn't this fun? <laughs> The Gift by Lee Young Lee. To pull the metal splinter from my palm, my father recited the story in a low voice. I watched his lovely face and not the blade. Before the story ended, he'd removed the iron sliver I thought I'd die from. I can't remember the tale, but hear his voice still. A well of dark water, a prayer, and I recall his hands. Two measures of tenderness he laid against my face. The flames of discipline he raised above my head. Had you entered that afternoon, you would have thought you saw a man planting something in a boy's palm. A silver tear, a tiny flame. Had you followed that boy, you would have arrived here, where I bend over my wife's right hand. Look how I shave her thumbnail down. So carefully she feels no pain. Watch as I lift the splinter out. I was seven when my father took my hand like this. And I did not hold that shard between my fingers and think, metal that will bury me, christen it little assassin, or going deep for my heart. And I did not lift up my wound and cry, death visited here. 
I did what a child does when he's given something to keep. I Grace Melber from Ridgefield High School. Sunlight so quickly to one another 
that it would take long, streaming hair inside my brush to catch it, to paint the speed of light. Our weighted shapes, these verticals, burn to mix with air and change our bones, skin, clothes to gases. Doctor, if only you could see how heaven pulls earth into its arms and how infinitely the heart expands to claim this world, blue vapor without end. unprecedented for us so um, I do want you to know that the scores are double triple checked and this is just proof of um, them going over and over them and as well as the accuracy so um, we obviously take it very seriously so because I don't have a song and a dance prepared for you tonight <laughs> um, we're just going to take a few minutes for the um, scorekeepers to um, collect the scores and then we'll um, be right back here in just probably three three to five minutes. Um, I would like to ask all of the students after I announce the winners to please stay because we'd like you to all come up and take a picture um, so that we can have that for um, for our website and publicity purposes and we just want to see your faces in a picture because you did such an awesome job tonight. So thank you. So of the three-way tie, I would like to remember two of these um, students go on to our state, uh, state competition. And so I would like to announce one of the two winners as Isaac Liu from Also go on to the state competition is Mila Fuentes. come up to the stage and be recognized and have a picture taken. They did an incredible job, so big, incredible job. 